With more than 50 Game of the Year awards under its belt, Fallout 4 is poised for a major, potentially game-changing sequel. And just as war never changes, the video game rumor mill grinds on and on. As we wait for official news from the front, let's take a look at four Fallout 5 rumors that will most likely come to fruition, along with four speculations that are more suspicious than a face-changing synth-sympathizing sidekick. <laughs> uh, I, I can't keep up with this bullshit. True, a Creation Club comeback. During the studio's E3 2017 press briefing, Bethesda announced Creation Club. Introducing Creation Club, a collection of new game content for Skyrim and Fallout 4. Featuring new items, abilities, and gameplay features, Creation Club introduced fully curated content compatible with both games as well as their DLC add-ons. This move prompted flashbacks to 2015's paid mod debacle on Steam when Valve began monetizing game mods and was subsequently met with overwhelming disapproval from a legion of PC players who were used to getting their mods for free. Two thumbs down. <laughs> Bethesda was quick to assuage any fears, with Vice President Pete Hines going on record to both defend the paid mod creators and remind players that nothing would change from their core experience. The Creation Club marketplace is still very much open for business in Fallout 4 and Skyrim Special Edition, and the simple fact that Bethesda is currently accepting applications from professional developers, artists, and modders contributes to the firm belief that Creation Club 2.0 will see the light of day in Fallout 5. False Fallout New Vegas 2. It started with an innocent tweet. A curious fan asked senior designer Eric Fenstermaker if Obsidian Entertainment would be developing another Fallout game following the explosive success of Fallout New Vegas. Fenstermaker's response was humble enough. I'm always up for working on a Fallout. I think most of us generally are. Really fun property to work with. Then the rumor mill got a whirlin, and before you knew it, talk of Obsidian returning to the Fallout franchise was all over the front page of the game's subreddit. While not a direct sequel of Bethesda's Fallout 3, the Obsidian-helmed Fallout New Vegas hit the marketplace in October 2010 and quickly proved a financial success, with more than 5 million copies shipping during the first month of the game's release. No wonder hopes were high for a follow-up. But Obsidian's Mikey Dowling would blast these hopes to smithereens in an email to Kotaku's Jason Schreier, stating, "...we've said plenty of times that we'd love to work on a Fallout again if Bethesda wanted us to. We just aren't at this time. Whenever a new Fallout comes around, though, whoever is doing it, we all look forward to playing." it. True, something to talk about. The Fallout franchise does a lot of things right. One of those things is dialogue. At least it was in the first three main games, and New Vegas, of course. Just look at it. The way it blinks. It's like a big, hairless teddy bear. But Fallout 4 replaced what was once an immersive and role-playing friendly dialogue system with a simpler four-button one that relied on the player character's charisma stats and a handful of perks. Suffice to say, fans were a little let down by the sudden shift. During an interview with GameSpot at E3 2016, Bethesda Game Studios director and executive producer Todd Howard shared his feelings on Fallout 4's dialogue mechanics, admitting, Obviously, the way we did some dialogue stuff, that didn't work as well. For us, we take that feedback, and I think it's, I, I think, long term. It's safe to say Howard's long term goals will no doubt impact the development of Fallout 5, and a refined dialogue system seems to be near the top of Bethesda's to do list. False Sayonara Uncle Sam. According to UK-based news outlet Gamer Problems, Fallout 5 could be the first entry in the series to lose the good old stars and stripes. Of course, the website admits that this is very unlikely before stating there are many other interesting places where Bethesda could take the location of Fallout 5 to Russia, China, and North Korea even. Sounds an awful lot like wishful thinking if you ask us. And while the idea of crossing continental lines, or even the US border, sounds somewhat appealing, it's at odds with some core Fallout themes and aesthetics. Ever since the sole survivor of Vault 13 ventured out into the Southern California wasteland looking for new water supply, the narrative of this sci-fi series has taken place squarely in the United States, or high above it, in the case of Fallout 3's Mothership Zeta DLC. Arguably, Fallout's portrayal of post-war Americana kitsch is part of its DNA. The franchise ventures boldly and consistently into the realm of satire as often as it keenly exploits the traditional narrative tropes of the action-adventure and science fiction genres. One team would beat the other team to death with these things called baseball ball bats, and, and the best bats were called swatters. True fact. True VR revolution. 
Bethesda Softworks made a pledge to embrace virtual reality development when Pete Hines took the stage during the studio's E3 2016 press conference. We think the greatest promise of VR is its ability to immerse players completely into virtual worlds. When you make a claim like that, you'd better deliver on it. And Bethesda did. Almost a year and a half later, Fallout 4 VR was released to the HTC Vive platform. Like Skyrim VR before it, reception to the game was mixed, with critics like Kotaku's Mike Fahey leveling complaints against the game's illusion break control scheme. Fallout 4 VR has been on the market for some time, but it has yet to find its audience. Despite the mixed critical reactions to this early outing, we can expect Todd Howard and company to soldier on with feedback in hand, similar to the way they handled criticism of Fallout 4's revised dialogue system. With an open runway likely throughout the development of Fallout 5, we can't imagine any reason why VR won't be a feature at launch. False and Inhuman Hero Hold on to your sugar bombs. In their March 2018 rundown, tech website News 4C entertained the idea that the next Fallout protagonist might not be a smooth skin at all. The site asks the question, how cool would it be to have the option to play as a synth or as a mutant? Unfortunately, their theory is more pipe dream than prediction, and they didn't offer any real supporting evidence. If there's one thing Bethesda Softworks games do well, it's portray the tragedy of the human condition and the survival instinct in a brutally honest and insightful way. Fallout's super mutants Ghouls and synths are themselves reductive representations of mankind's baser instincts to kill, to survive, to transcend. And although it's fun to imagine playing a character that's more human than human in the Fallout 5 sandbox, this is one rumor that we can't imagine coming true anytime soon. True, a Fallout MMO While this one's not exactly a Fallout 5 rumor, it could very well change the future of the Fallout franchise if it proves true. Yep, you've heard it before, and with the multiplayer Fallout 76 on the horizon, you'll likely be hearing it again. We're talking about the ever-prophesized Fallout Massively Multiplayer Online Game, or MMO. Whether you choose to explore the wasteland alone or with friends, your days will be filled with fun activities. CEO Robert Altman in stilled hopes for a Bethesda-helmed MMO in the Fallout universe as early as 2012. Meanwhile, rumors of returning characters from Fallout 3 picked up steam after Eric Todd Dellums, the actor who portrayed Three Dog, took to Twitter to spill the beans about a project that never happened. On January 8, 2013, Dellums tweeted, To all my Fallout 3 and Three Dog fans, there may be more of the dog coming, fingers crossed. Dellums subsequently deleted the tweet, and there was no Three Dog to be seen or heard from anywhere in Fallout 4. Altman's stance seems to strongly propose a Fallout Fallout MMO from the parent company is in the works, and the cryptic tweet from Delms might suggest his iconic character's involvement in a Fallout game that revisits the Capital Wasteland. Additionally, listings on the ZeniMax job page for both a senior server engineer and a back-end services engineer have fueled speculation that ZeniMax Online and Bethesda are doubling their efforts in the multiplayer arena. Given all of that and the fact that Bethesda's testing the waters with Fallout 76, a large-scale Fallout MMO seems almost inevitable. False, the return of Chris Avalone. According to some very hopeful outlets, Fallout 2 designer, New Vegas writer, and all-around RPG favorite Chris Avalone is potentially working on a future installment of the post-apocalyptic series. While known for his cartoon doodles, Avalone himself is partly responsible for this unlikely spark of hope. In an image posted to Facebook of Vault Boy and Avalone's Hallmark stick figure began to fuel intense speculation about the RPG titan's possible return to the Fallout franchise. But this short-lived rumor was seemingly put to rest in May of 2018. In a candid response to a curious Twitter user when asked about his potential involvement with Fallout 76, Avalon replied, Alas, it is not to be. I'm not working on 76, but I'm very interested in seeing more about it. After the fan expressed hope of Avalon's future involvement in the Fallout series, the creator let the trail run cold. With so very little to hang our hopes on, especially considering Avalon's continued trolling of the ill-fated Van Buren project, we don't see this beloved creator of the Mojave Wasteland contributing to the development of any future Fallout titles, at least not anytime soon.